are here with Derek DLC. About to go to the water park is what I'm assuming. The perfectly clean counters were a welcome sight after your efforts the night before. Those last moments of the previous day had gone by so fast and you fell asleep so immediately. It honestly felt like a 10 minute timeout had been called rather than several hours passing. But Derek's warm greeting was still welcome to your ears. Morning. It's a brand new day, a fresh start, and we're, ready, we're already set to make the most of it. This was off from the park hadn't been lost under the light of a new day. Rather, the dark from the dark moment seemed a lifetime away from the man in front of you now. Morning, today's gonna be an adventure. For sure. How'd you sleep? It was another good night. I slept soundly. Awesome. His eyes darted towards a tidy kitchen where you were, where plenty of supplies were tucked away, then his gaze returned to you. Before our big day, we gotta have a have, we've got to have breakfast. Can't be running on empty. Yeah, I'll get something. Derek's meal consisted of scrambled eggs and a side of cinnamon steel cut oats, steel cut oats cooked in almond milk. You prepare some bacon with some sim simple com uh, accompaniments. Accompaniments? What the fuck? I've never seen that word. <laughs> Plates, bowls, cups, and utensils were set at the table, and the two of you sat yourselves down in chairs. You noticed Derek focused on a singular part of his food at a time. He didn't start working through the oatmeal until the eggs were entirely gone. Between bites, Derek chatted idly about your plans. So? Do you have a swimsuit? I know I'm asking this now. I know, I'm asking this now. The morning we're going, I should have checked ages ago. I was excited. But we can stop by somewhere to get you one if you don't. Your preparation game is slipping, Mr. Suarez. However, mine is still razor sharp. I packed a swimsuit. I usually end up needing it at some point when I'm back home, even if I don't always know exactly why. You grew up right next to the ocean. Having swimming gear on hand was second nature. You'd probably bring it even if you were going to the top of a mountain. He snickered. Good point. Let's pack it all up as soon as breakfast is over. We can hit the road right away. Oh, yeah. oh and they have changing rooms there. We won't have to drive all the way there in swimsuits. Just remember to bring it along. His planning instincts came back in full force as he rattled off a list of potential items to pack, counting them off on his fingers. Water, the swimsuit, a towel, a change of clothes, sunscreen, cover-ups, maybe... Join in on the discussion, you listen happily to his chatter, you begin to feel nervous now that the time had why would you feel nervous? It's a it's a fun, exciting day. I would probably listen happily. Derek made even basic list listicles listicles fun. What? What the fuck are these words? <laughs> I've never seen these words. And every possibility should be covered with someone like him on your side. Derek grew more and more eager as he spoke. He stopped briefly to polish off his oatmeal and down a bottle of sports drink. You followed his lead and made quick work of your breakfast. Well, that you cleared off your own dishes. From there, you went straight back to your rooms to gather the new supplies you needed. You had a carry-on sized bag as part of your luggage that you could use for the day trip. It had been emptied out already for your stay at Derek's. The first thing you packed was your swimsuit. It was a Speedo. A one piece, a bikini, a tankini, swim trunks. Um... The fuck's a tankini? I know a Speedo. Isn't that more like for dudes to wear though? I don't know. Uh, let's make him fall in love with us a little bit quicker. <laughs> Bikini. And you pack a t-shirt, shawl, shorts, hat, towel, goggles. A little shawl. Um, is there sunscreen on here? Well, my towel. Um, sunglasses? Do I just take all of this? Does the t-shirt and shorts count as like your change of outfit or no? I don't know. Cause it didn't allow me to bring sunscreen. I would have brought that. Well, water bottle is the last piece. It was so great that you get to go swimming. You're going to look fantastic. The thought of going to a crowded park in it was stressful. The thought of wearing it in front of Derek was stressful. You couldn't wait to see what Derek would be in. Let's do that one. Whatever it was, it would be a sight, of, a sight to behold. A few more bits and bobs were slipped into the pack before you zipped it up. You mentally ran over the contents, going through an imaginary checklist for all the important supplies. When you felt certain you had everything you need, you slung the bag over your, over your shoulders and regrouped with Derek in the living room. <laughs> his gym bag was under his right arm. Derek attempted to give you a thumbs up without letting it slip out. This is gonna be good. Yeah. You left the apartment behind knowing you wouldn't be seeing it again until the day had ended. Once Derek, you and, Be and your bags were packed in the car, <laughs> he pulled out of the parking lot. Derek's in your first big outing with just the two of you had begun. There was a 
lengthy trip ahead of you, but Derek had it all under control. He used the opportunity to check in with family and friends. With how busy each day in Prism City, Prism Vista City had been, it was only in moments like this when you had a chance to keep up with text. Lee was on a trip herself, gallivanting around Europe. She sent you a whole series of photos she'd taken, from food she'd eaten to fashion she'd worn. It, looked, uh, it, it all looked amazing. Liz shot you back a message and say she was so swamped. She apologized but had little time to chat with her little sister. Knowing Liz was okay comforted you and so did seeing her queenly attitude still hadn't changed. But it was a bit sad that both of you had such separate lives now that you were grown. But once you put your phone down in your lap, Derek was there to avoid any dead air. He chatted boyishly about the water park. He recounted stories of his past excursions there with his family over the years. How one time they almost got kicked out because Nicholas jumped into Der onto Derek's back to go down a single person slide with him instead of waiting to have his own turn. Luckily, no one was hurt and they got off the hook in the end. It was hard for anyone to stay mad at a kid like that. Then, as if his words materialized a mythic lost city into existence, the massive slides Derek had been describing began to rise up against the skyline. The sparkle in his eyes as Derek spotted them only added to the legendary effect of what you were beholding you'd, have, you'd arrive. Before you could enter the, through the hollowed gates, you had to pay a terrible price. $15 for one day parking pass and then $45 each for tickets. God. It was worth the cost, according to Derek, and the exchange was made. The afternoon was young when you actually made it inside of the water park. Oh, how pretty. I haven't been to a water park in, like, years. But they got the mushroom things uh, on point. <laughs> I, I think I have a photo of me under one of these. And my dad and my brother. But I don't have those photos. They're in Florida, so. It was a dazzling playground with rides curving and looping through the air, taller than the palm trees, lazily fluttering in the breeze. Their leaves greeted every guest with a friendly flick of the front. An entire place was run by an expensive, expansive, not expensive, expansive artificial wave pool that broke off into smaller streams squeezing through the walkways. All right. He jogged ahead with all the enthusiasm of a first-time goer before spinning around to face the person who'd actually never been there before. Let's get on our swimsuits so we can get started. The individual changing rooms and showers are over there. I hope he's wearing like a tank top or something because if we had to see him shirtless this entire chapter, I don't think I will survive. <laughs> Derek poked a finger off to the left to, your, to direct your gaze. Over the heads of strangers rubber necking, you can make out some simple beige buildings. It was only part of the place that wasn't immediately eye catching. Plus, there are lockers you can use to keep your stuff safe. Want to meet up back here when you're done? When we're done, I can handle that. Be back in a flash. The huddle of two, uh, the, t the huddle of two broke, and you got in line for the bathrooms. Eventually, you each got your own stalls. In the privacy of the small space, you performed a grand, quick change act for no one but yourself. You weren't about to waste your park time in there. Derek and the water were waiting. Though, after throwing one set of clothes off and on another on, you paused to make sure nothing was left behind. With all your belongings bundled in your arms, you fumbled the lock open and left the stall in record time and you were charged again to claim a locker during your visit. It was a real amusement park experience with a shrug you packed your clothes and phone aside for safekeeping. Then you made your way back to the entrance. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you're so muscular. You're so muscular. <laughs> Through the crowds of other guests, you continued forward until you spotted Derek standing with his now bare feet at the edge of the pool. Water bubbled over his toes when the waves came in. He was sporting only a form-fitting black swimsuit, streaking down each side were green accents that made his eyes pop even more than usual. What's up? Sup, gal? Those verdant eyes were focused right on your pink ones. The fixation was so- I forgot my eyes were pink. <laughs> the fixation was so intent, you couldn't help getting the impression that it was a pointed avoidance of looking anywhere else. Oh, he's such a gentleman! Like your swimsuit clad body, for example. <laughs> All said? Yeah. You know, you're really ripped. Can I say that I appreciate your swimsuit? So did you pick the water park to see me in a swimsuit? You hummed quietly. You know, you're really ripped. And with that, you'd officially made Derek's day. He beamed wider than a championship winner's victory Thank photo. Thank you. Come on. Where should we get? Where should we start or get started? I want to do anything and everything. There's no way to lose. You re recollected the main attractions. Derek had filled you in during the ride with a security. Sur sorry, not security. Sur surety, surety uh, of an authority on the topic. Even though you'd never stepped foot in here before, you told Derek where you hoped to start. Slides, wave pool, explore water playground, lazy river. Oh, when I was younger. We did the wave pool first, and then, like, we did the slides. 
I don't think we've messed around with the playground too much, but the lazy river was the very last thing we did, because, you know, a lazy river, we're all tired. Um, so let's go to Waypool. What a coincidence. Coincidence? Coincidence, so do I. That particular attraction was the majority of the park. It's wrapped its way against the walkways and up into every corner. You didn't need Derek to point the way you wanted to go, as you were essentially already there. Derek knew that too. There was no need to pick a different spot in the expansive pool. He just jumped in. You joined him in the water. It was an interesting experience. To, uh, experience the wave pool. The pool had a gradually sloping shape with a shore on one side. Waves pushed from one to one end to the other on a timer. They were going. They were going when you got in. You bobbed up and down with the, the replicated motion of the ocean. Usually, you had to choose between a man-made swimming experience of still water in a perfectly shaped hole, or the vast, wild, unpredictability of the sea. Unpredictable. Whatever. The wave pool had the pro had the bro pros of both. The wave pool's attempt to mix them was a terrible idea. If it was a category of its own, in a good way, bad way, you thought it was fine. Uh, it was fine. Nice to try, but not exactly life changing. You'd just be just as happy in a pool or at the beach. Uh, swim through the pool. We tried white. Wait, ooh, wave riding. Oh wait, splash Derek while his guard was down. Let's do that one. A dormant devi dev deviousness bubbled up inside of you. You cupped your hands, filling them with the chlorinated water. You waited until Derek's head turned fully towards you. Then you launched an ammunition straight ahead. Uh. Nailed him. I should have seen that coming. <laughs> he used the hand to wipe away both the clinging drops of water and look of amusement, revealing his game face underneath. It's on, Michiko. He screeched as Derek struck at the surface, no sooner than he did officially declare the war. The cresting of the water added a whole other dimension to your classic splash fights with Derek. You move with the flow, using it to your advantage, and shooting back when you had in high ground. Had the high ground. <laughs> I just <laughs> I can't help but think of fucking Star Wars whenever I hear um, that someone has the high ground. <laughs> Derek fought against you and the difference in the battlefield. He wasn't used to it, but he had more experience with these kind of scuffles. Nico and George were always up for the rough housing. Elizabeth, not so much. The Clash of Titans was a sight to be seen, but for some reason, other guests instead elected to move further away instead of staying to witness it. A truce was called when both of you were breathless and being eyeballed by one of the lifeguards. You and Derek spent the rest of the afternoon in the pool. Then you got out of the pool. Let's get out of the pool. Uh, let's go on some slides. Hell yeah! You shot a hand towards the twisting yellow one, making it very clear which ride you were intent, you were intent on going for. Derek had a thumbs up for that. Good choice! The two of you raced across the park and came to an abrupt stop at the long, clustered group of people who had all the same ideas as you. Amusement park lines at peak summer visiting hours were no joke. You inched forward every minute or so. Screams echo from the top of the stairs as guest after guest hurtled down the water slide. Distant surf rock played over the speakers as you waited for your turn. You didn't even notice it was there until you got in higher up the steps. Derek entertained himself and you by a little dance a little dance of playing air ukulele and tie with the tune. You snickered all the way to the launch platform. It was a it was a closed top rather than a half pipe. There was a perfectly round opening for the slide that continued into a deep dark descent. A loud, lo not loud. A low roar came from the swirling waters, flooding through the massive tube. It was a straw of a giant trying to suck you inside. Your heart pounded. After you, uh, no, you first. Thanks. Here I go. I'm a little nervous. Can you go? You quietly stepped ahead. You shook your head. Uh, here I go. The right technician led you to the lip of the slide, listed off the safety measures that you, they'd certainly recited a million times before and gave you the okay to push off. There was no need to tell you twice, you scooted your butt right into the surge and you were off. You zipped down and around as if you were a gumball, one of those fancy machines that made the treat go through a loop before arriving in the waiting child's hand. But the water embraced that you land that you landed in was an explosion of heated pool water. A massive smile standing your face at your surface. There was no time to get a stuck to get stuck in a daze. A vibrating woo chased after you through the narrow path until once again the water was launched into the air by a dramatic arrival. You and Derek waded through the waist deep water, catching the breath that you had been t that had been taken away by the rush. It was a wild ride, but only the beginning. You were certain to hit every one of the half dozen big slides in the place. Um, we're gonna do something else. Let's explore the water playground. Yeah, we could. It's over this way. The slides were in front of the center in the uh, the slides were front and center in the park. Derek brought you around behind them. There was a water playground, a rubber coated floor with a few inches of water over the entire space, clearly differentiated this area from the rest of the park. At the heart of it was an impressive jungle gym with multiple levels. Where? Okay, we're gonna pretend it's here. <laughs> 
multiple levels, bridges leading to different structures and water just shooting out everywhere. But the star feature was a truck-sized bucket threatening to spill its contents over at any moment. It was a Saturday morning cartoon playhouse coming to life. That section was mostly for younger guests, based on the signage and the fact that it was full of kids, but it was big enough for grown-ups too, and you didn't want to miss out on anything. Besides, Derek would have told you if it was a bad idea, or maybe his childlike impulsive streak was showing his colors, and he simply didn't care about technicalities either. It was hard to say, but at least he was having a good time. The two of you clambered up the step and explored the catwalks. Derek ducked and weed to avoid the spray of nearby fountains before intentionally sticking his face into one of the closest, into the, cl the one closest to the jungle gym. He shook his head off. He shook his head to get off, get the water off, hitting you with the crossfire. Sorry. You sputtered a laugh, stunned in place by the surprise splash. Derek leapt over a tiny flight of stairs off the jungle gym to put more distance between you, but there was no time to form a proper reaction to any of that before there was a new source of excitement. The bucket is about to drop. Shining, Derek opened his arms out wide and beckoned towards you. Ran down to him, you ran to Derek and grabbed his hand, they sprinted past him to get there first. I'm gonna pass on that one. He jumped out of the platforms into his arms. You stayed right where oh we're gonna jump into his arms? Whoa! Derek stumbled a step on impact despite the unexpected stunt and the added difficulty of being wet, he caught you like a champ. The momentum didn't stop. Derek spun around and sped towards the splash zone, bringing you with him. The massive tank gradually tipped until a waterfall spilled over, completely submerging, submerging you in its flood for a single moment. Then it was all over. The only sign that happened was a small wave that rippled out from the drop point and through the rest of the playground. Derek shifted over to help you get down onto your own feet. You laugh carefree. The high of the on land plunge lingered. It had been incredible. Um, and now we go to the lazy river. Definitely. Derek wove his way around the paths. He didn't need a map to navigate the air with confidence. Around a bend and flanked by a row of palm trees was a sloping artificial shore that led into the river rather than the wave pool. There was a single employee tasked with passing out donut shaped floats for the ride. Here we are. He strode up to the park worker, holding up two fingers. They got the message and handed Derek two tubes. One was kept for himself, the other was obviously for you. Getting into the float was, wasn't relaxing or graceful. As tacky as it felt when dry, it was a tricky beast to mount when you hit the water. You barely avoided both flipping over the side face first into the river and bending entirely inward and slipping through the hole in the center. Derek had his own tribulations. It gave you his, <laughs> he gave you space to kick off but waited too long to follow. You were going down the ride without him. He got into the water on his float, paddled his arm, flailed his legs, and pumped his chest forward and back and forward and back in an amusing attempt to get some forward momentum going. It was not effective, so he went plan B. It did not surprise you that he had plan B. And a slightly sargrillious mood. What the fuck? I mean, I guess I'm learning new words that I'm not going to retain, though. He got off the tube to swim through the lazy river. Once he reached you, he dove under the surface, came up through the hole of his float, and made use of his upper body strength to pull himself into a sitting position. Finally, you were properly situated. <laughs> Derek was at your side and the leisure time could begin in earnest. The sun's heat fell down over the world so hard, it might have been a physical blanket draped on top of you, but the underside of your body was dipped in the cool water, kept your temperatures comfortable. Oh man! We did it! We've talked about going to another park together ever since we went to the boardwalk years ago. Good job us! Better late than never. Agreed. Not mild. Okay, uh, I was just in mid, <laughs> mid conversation. Mild conversation followed on and off about appropriately mellow topics, such as the weather and how pleasant the drive there had been. Between that were moments of quiet resting, as leisurely as the pace was, slow and steady could still win the race. You made a full loop around the park and drifted back into the starting bay, or cove, you might say. You chuckled to yourself and sank lower in your tube. The ride was so relaxing, you began to fall into that special kind of half awake humor. For hours, there was nothing in the world but water, fun, Derek, and even more water. There was no work to be done or places to be. You had to do nothing but whatever you felt like doing. You wrung out every bit of enjoyment until time caught up to your heels. Lights started to wane as the sun hid behind the towering slides. Dripping wet and thoroughly wrinkled, you and Derek scampered over to the lockers. Turning the knob was no easy feat in your current seats, but you needed towels and money. After a long day in the water, you were starving. You ignored the grumbles in your stomach to focus as much as possible on keeping your grip with slippery fingers. Finally, you managed to break open the safe and access the goods inside. You plucked up the towel that had been resting on top of your clothing pile. The clothing pile was an inspired piece of forethought to make it as accessible as possible. If only you'd consider taking your wallet out of your pocket ahead of time. You made good use of the towel until your hands were dry for the first time in it. You weren't sure, even sure for how long. Then you start to dig for your money. Derek learned ba leaned back on his heels and craned his neck to look past his locker door to you, ready to eat. 
I wish. Why is it so hard getting harder getting stuff out of your pocket when you aren't wearing a dress? Hmm, maybe it's a positioning thing. It's an annoying thing. After a while, awkward tug, you succeed in warming the wallet out of its fabric cocoon. There we go. With a flick of your wrist, you closed your locker. Getting dressed could wait. A second clattering slam followed right after. Derek shut his too. He tossed his neon towel over his shoulders like a shawl, then folded his arms. Well. Honestly, the food here is bad. For theme park restaurants, at least it's worth trying. That's good. A decent meal is exactly what I need right now. You may like your wallet and securely wrapped yourself in a towel. It dampened instantly, but it was still very cozy. You made a break for the central area where the poolside restaurant was set. Your towels rippled in the wind and your feet slapped against the concrete path. You felt free as a bird and all, and all of 13 years old. The water park restaurant had only outdoor seating and a small shack where the food was prepared. But the rich, savory scents wafting from the sliding openings on the front of the building convinced you more than enough. Once you and Derek got to the window, you wasted no time putting in your orders, paying and setting up camp at the closest available table. He leaned fully back against the white plastic chair and chuckled contentedly. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've gone to a park, this one or any others. I'm always busy, right? So busy. We barely made it today, but we did. Exactly, we did it. His cheeks and eyes looked pleased. You're more grateful than ever to be there at the water park instead of the state you grew up in and at the side of your very good friend. <sighs> when can we proceed with the relationship? <laughs> Your meal soon arrived and was finished briskly. Swimming had made you entirely famished. The potential post-food conversation was cut off for you and Derek, and every single person of the vicinity. It began with an echoing bell over the entire park, and then transitioned to a spoken message. The employee announced as cheerfully as possible that the park was closing soon, and all guests needed to get out of the pools. Derek glanced up in the sky and in a general direction where the disembodied voice came from. I swear. Man, it went so fast. At least it was really nice while it lasted, and we can make it make tomorrow good too. What are we doing tomorrow? <laughs> there was something in his wandering gaze and the playful quirk of his lips. The end of the occasion had skipped all the all the other stages of grief and gone straight to the acceptance for Derek. Tomorrow is well, I have a feeling it won't be too hard to have some fun. You watched him with intrigue, fully expecting to be let on let in on what kept his spirit so high, but he merely grinned your way and explained nothing. Still, approaching closing the park spurred the both of you on. It wouldn't be irresponsible to dawdle. Your trash hat was thrown out. You jumped in the shower for a brief wash before changing to your actual clothes and getting back into Derek's car. It was late by the time you parked once more in his designated spot for the apartment complex. What little remained in the night was passed in peaceful relaxation around the apartment before collapsing into bed. Early the next day, you lazily hung around the apartment. Derek was showering after the gym and you both already had a quick breakfast. It was a true change of pace to have a slow morning, a slow day on your trip. You welcomed the break. Derek wanted to pop over to his parents' house one more time. He was still itching to get his hand on Nico's switch, but there was a blink schedule besides that. And this is where we are going to stop for today's episode because it's a brand new day. So I guess that's how I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Break it up into days. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.